This is Airborne on Aero TV. Now streaming on the internet and around the world in ANN's all new RetinaVision Super 3D. There is nothing wrong with your monitor. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling the transmission. If we wish to make it louder, we will bring up the volume. If we wish to make it softer, we will tune it to a whisper. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We control the image from a soft blur to sharp crystal clarity. For the next few minutes, sit quietly, and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your monitor. Now, with today's report, here is aero-news.net's Ashley Dash Hale. Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, pop star David Bowie heads for space. Piper is urged to change the names of their airplanes, and the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds will change planes next year. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm Ashley Hale. Pop star legend David Bowie has moved to Russia to be in training as the next tourist to visit the International Space Station, and he has a very specific reason for traveling to the orbiting outpost to sing the ultimate space oddity. Bowie said, quote, Hadfield got it all wrong. I gave him permission to record space oddity on the space station, but nobody can do the song like the original. The accent was all wrong, and it just so many things needed to be improved. I just have to go do it myself." End quote. Boeing was of course referring to Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who recorded the song during his stay on ISS and created an international sensation as a result. Bowie said there are some logistical problems though. Quote, I wanted to take an entire band, you know, but the Russians said there was only so many seats available, so I'll just have to karaoke it, I guess. End quote. A group of Democratic U.S. Senators have written a letter to Piper President and CEO Simon Caldicott, urging him to rebrand many of the company's iconic airplanes because their names are, quote, demeaning to Native Americans. In the letter, the Senators say that names like Apache, Cherokee, and Seminole are an insult to Native Americans. U.S. Senator Charles Schumer said that, quote, the company already has the M series, so they moved away from the native names at some point in the past. End quote. Senator Dianne Feinstein said that the company should use names that could not possibly be offensive to anyone. Quote, They're birds, so why not change Cherokee to Chickadee, Seminole to Sparrow, and Apache to. Well, they've got creative marketing people. End quote. Caldicott was quoted as saying, it wouldn't make a spit in the ocean's difference anyways. Piper would still call a Cherokee a Cherokee, an Aztec an Aztec, and a Seminole a Seminole. And speaking of which, we're considering a copyright infringement patent against Boeing over their Apache. We've had that name long before they did." End quote. You're watching a very special edition of Airborne Unlimited. We may be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. That is, if we can find our way back to the studio. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send an email to news-by at aero-news.net. 
Sonex has landed a contract with the U.S. Air Force to provide Subsonix jets as the next aircraft for the Thunderbirds demonstration team. The company said today that it was shipping a dozen kits to Eglin Air Force Base in Florida, where they will be assembled and painted in the distinctive Thunderbirds livery. Sonex founder and president John Monette said that the USAF would receive the same outstanding customer assistance as all Sonex builders. Monette added, quote, I guarantee you they won't need any $900 wrenches to put these birds together, end quote. The Thunderbirds will fly this season in their F-16s, but next year they'll shift to the Subsonics aircraft. Secretary of the Air Force Deborah Lee James said that the move was strictly a cost-saving measure. James said, quote, It's a jet, right? They'll still make a lot of noise, fly pretty fast, and can do almost everything that the F-16s can do. It's going to be great for the taxpayers. She also added, Besides, we can load the whole team into one refurbished C-47 to travel to shows, end quote. As an extension to the Pilots' Bill of Rights, Oklahoma Republican Senator James Inhofe proposed legislation that would require any media organization presenting stories about aviation to have the reporters covering those stories pass a basic knowledge test under the Accuracy and Aviation Reporting Act of 2015. Reporters would be required to take a basic ground school course and pass a 10-question written exam to attain an aviation-approved designation. An official seal would be added to any story reported by a journalist that has complied with the act. Inhofe said, quote, The level of reporting on aviation topics is all over the map. And the public has a right to know if the person who wrote the story has any clue about what they've written, end quote. And I'll cite it as an example, the reporting on the loss of MH370, in which CNN graphics stated that, quote, Boeing 777 will struggle to maintain altitude once the fuel tanks are empty, end quote. And I've continued, quote, They need to know the difference between an aerodynamic stall and an engine failure. When you stall in an airplane, it doesn't mean the engine quit. I've never popped the clutch in my RV-8 and had the engine stop." End quote. After the break, Airborne is brought to you by sponsors who will be demanding refunds after seeing today's program. But hopefully if we can make it back after the break, we'll find out why Cup Crafters has done it again. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to bendixking.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we summarize some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. <music> Cub Crafters has done it again. While maintaining the classic Cub style and appeal, they've created a super duper double decker two engine Cub. It's twice as much airplane for twice the fun. Rand's Designs has joined with Walmart for sales and support of the RANS LSA and SLSA aircraft. Walmart Supercenters will provide flight training in the RANS aircraft, displaying the Walmart slogan of Save Money, Fly Better. President Barack Obama has signed an executive order transferring ownership of Air Force One to himself when he leaves office in January 2017. The president was overheard saying, Executive orders are great. 
I can do almost anything. Cessna plans to certify an updated version of their twin-engine T-50 trainer, better known as the Bamboo Bomber, next year. Cessna CEO Scott Ernst said the success of the new Waco Great Lakes biplane proves that people want these nostalgic airplanes. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, April 1st. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Please remember that Airborne will be streamed each and every day from now until the apocalypse, if we get around to it. And it's always online, which makes me wonder, why do we even need a schedule at all? But you can still join us every day, Monday through Friday, for a new edition of Airborne Unlimited. Wait a minute, is this mic even on? Oh yeah, one more thing, April Fools. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching.